hello welcome 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 to money mondays give me a second i'm trying to get my tech together hey everybody welcome to money mondays i am glad you're here i finally got my uh tech set up in the ninth hour um so i'm super excited for you all to be here it's 9 p.m on the dot we're gonna go ahead and get started i'm nakia um welcome to money mondays if this is your first time here um, I want to welcome you. We do this every Monday at 9 p.m. Central Standard Time. So come on. I talk about money issues. We talk about budgeting. We talk about all kinds of good things. So I'm excited to have you here and I'm ready to go. So let me grab my notes. Um, you guys know I always come prepared. Uh, tonight for Money Mondays, we're going to be talking about the eight different streams of income. Okay. This is a topic that I enjoy talking about because you see so much of this on um, Instagram, you see it on Facebook, you know, everybody's telling you how to be a millionaire, they're telling you what to do. But I like to always take a step back and explain it to you from a different perspective, right? Because it's hard to be a newborn baby and then learn how to run. You have to crawl, you have to walk first. So I'm gonna give you a different perspective on these different um, streams of income. We're gonna talk about them a little bit. I'm going to give you some examples. So welcome, welcome, welcome. Um, hi, Candy. I see Candy's on. Hi, Carla. I see Carla's on. So it's 9.01. Let's go ahead and dive right in. As I said, um, this is one of my favorite topics, okay? And the reason being is because millionaires on average have seven streams of income, okay? Seven different ways that they're making money. And in this day and age, you really, 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 really have to be prepared because it's no joke, right? If the pandemic didn't teach us anything else, it should have taught us that one stream of income is too, cl too close to none. One of uh, my mentor coaches, my millionaire coaches that I follow and I've learned from her, she says that all the time. One stream of income is too close to none. So that is so true. And we really saw that during the pandemic, okay? So let's get into it. The first type of income is earned income, right? This is income that you get from working. So an example of this is a nine to five. If you're an entrepreneur, maybe you own a coffee shop, maybe you're a salon owner, um, maybe it's, you know, whatever you're doing to trade your time for money, right? So if you're going to an actual job and you're working, if you're a photographer like T Tash talks cash, hey Tash, um, then that's what it is, okay? Hey Sharita, welcome, welcome, welcome. So it's earned income. The pro is it can get you started, right? So you at least want to start with some type of earned income. Um, the con to this is it's really not going to make you rich. So unless you're like a CEO or you have a um, business that really takes off and you come up with this revolutionary idea, earned income is not going to get you rich. It's going to get you started. But started is better than not started, right? The second type of earned income is profit income. So profit income is income that you make from buying and selling, okay? So buy low, sell high, anything you make. So let's say you find items at the thrift store like I do and you sell them for money, you sell them for a profit. That's what profit income is. Buy cars, fixing them and selling them. Like when dealerships buy cars for $3 and sell them to us for $100,000. That's an exaggeration, but you get the point. It's any income that you make from buying and selling. So any profit income that you make from that. The third type of um, income is rental income, right? So it's income from renting property. So that property can be um, in terms of houses. It can be apartments. Um, it can be cars. If you have a luxury car rental, it can even be an Airbnb. It could be a bounce house. It could be a 365 photo booth. It's any money that you make or any income that you make from renting property, whatever that is. Now, there are some pros and cons to rental income. Um, usually the pro is that if you own that pr piece of property or that whatever it is, if it's land, whatever it is, if you own it, it's usually going to appreciate in value. If it's like a house or a piece of property or um, land, it's typically going to increase in value. The kind of that is, you know, then you have to get into the rental side. You have to think about the cost and all of that. So that's a whole nother beast, but it's still a very easy way to make income is still a very passive way to make income especially if you have like land that you're renting out to someone maybe you're renting out to a farmer or whatever it's still a great source of income okay the fourth type of income is interest income so this is income that you get from lending money so you got started with your earned income you got started with your business now you have a little money coming in a little extra money and you have some interest income so you can loan in, loan the money out 
So it's money like, let's say that you would loan to your family and friends with interest. I'm not talking about the $20 that you give to your cousin every time you see them. I'm talking about, hey, I want to start a business. Will you loan me X, Y, and Z, and I'll pay you this percentage in interest income. It can also be, you know, if you're making loans to, let's, let's say, house flippers. You got an extra $100,000. You want to flip your money real quick. You give it to someone that's been in the business. They just need some cash to float them. And that's how you earn that interest income. Also think about like Shark Tank. So this is what the investors do on Shark Tank. They say, okay, this is a great idea. I think it's going to be successful. I don't think it's going to be successful, but usually if they're giving you the money, they think it's going to be successful. So I'll loan you uh, $50,000 for 5% interest or 10% interest or something like that. That is what they're doing. That's interest income. That's how a lot of people, including banks, make their money using interest income. Okay. So it's a very viable source of income. Um, I, I have a note here done correctly. You can get better returns than you would in the stock market. So the stock market on average gives you anywhere from zero or negative to let's say 10 or 12% a year. If you are loaning your money and you're doing it faster in smaller increments, let's say you're, you're loaning it a hundred thousand dollars out every quarter and you're making 12% every single quarter, that's going to give, give you a higher return in the stock market. Okay. Makes sense. Makes sense. Okay, the fifth type of income is dividend income. So this is income that you uh, make from stocks, okay? So a lot of stocks pay dividends. And what that is, is that that's basically like your profit sharing or your, your money for holding their stock, okay? So the pro tip is you can pay the least amount of taxes on dividend income, but you usually have to have a lot of shares. So I'll give you an example. So I, right before um, this live, I looked up AT&T. AT&T stocks is $19.04, okay? They have a dividend yield of 6.92%. So let's say you buy $1,000 worth of stock and they pay out quarterly. That means every quarter, you're gonna make $69.20 on your money. Now on the other side, the more money you have invested, the more dividends you're going to make. So if you have a million dollars invested and you and you still are at this 6.92% dividend yield, then you're going to make $69,000, $69,200 every time they pay dividends. Now, if they pay them every quarter, you're essentially talking about um, $240,000 that you made on your money, right? As long as you don't sell that stock and you maintain those shares that you held. But a million dollars, the more money that you have invested in that stock, and the higher the dividend yield, the more money you can make. So this is also a very good way to make money. This is a good way to make income, especially if you have a large amount of money sitting somewhere. Maybe you sit at early retirement. Maybe you have a 401k, whatever it is. Maybe you can choose the stocks in your 401k, whatever it is. This is a, a great way to make money as well. Now, this is how the rich get rich. They get rich with dividend, um, with dividend income. And this is how they create generational wealth. So there is a thing, it's called the step up basis. And basically it means that you don't pay um, taxes on money or on, on the money that you make from your dividends or your stock um, if you don't cash it out or if you don't sell it. So let me give you an example. With dividends, people usually, <clears throat> excuse me, people usually take those dividends and reinvest it into the organization and buy more stock, okay? So let's say you bought stock or your grandparents bought stock for $10,000 and they held it for 50 years, right? It appreciates to $100,000 and then they die, right? Because everybody's going to die. We know they're going to die. They die. They then put that, um, give you that $100,000 as an inheritance. You're not going to pay any taxes on that money. So this is a great way to create generational wealth. You buy your stock low, you hold it for a long time, you hold it forever, and then when you pass away, which you eventually will, your uh, generations after you can get that money. So this is a way that they create generational wealth. All right. Now the sixth form of sixth stream of income is residual income. So this is income that is made after the work is done. Okay. So you see this a lot with TV shows, um, especially TV shows that are in syndication. So a good example of that is like Friends or Martin, how they made their money back when they recorded those episodes. But now that they're in syndication and they're constantly running, they're making additional income off that. So that's residual income. You also see this with artists, um, especially people who, you know, make, pieces of artwork 
um, musicians, you see this with people who create software, you see this with apps where they already did the work, right? They made the code, they wrote the code, and they're just sitting back and they're collecting their checks. So you see, you'll see residual income on social media everywhere. Everybody's telling you, oh, you need residual income, you need residual income. And you do to help grow your portfolio, to help increase your net worth, because anytime you can make money and you don't have to be there, anytime you can make money and you don't have to give them your time, you don't have to give them an hour, you don't even have to give them 30 minutes, that's a great thing. So put a pin in number six, residual income. It's a great way to make extra money. Seven is capital gains. So capital gains is income from assets that have increased in value. So like stocks and bonds, if you uh, buy some stock and it increases in value by $5,000 and you sell it, you're going to pay capital gains on that. That's considered capital gains. Um, jewelry, cryptocurrency, homes. Um, if you buy a house and you pay $20,000 for it and you sell it for $250,000, then your capital gains is $230,000. So it's anything that you buy and after you sell it, you make that money on there. It's considered a capital gain. There um, are also capital gains are also considered patents, inventions. Um, think of the super soaker um, or a water gun where somebody, they have, have this idea. Maybe they um, earned residual income from it. Maybe they got royalties from it. And we'll talk about royalties in a second. And then they decide, you know what? I'm done with this. Um, I'm really to, ready to sell it, right? They sell it. They get a billion dollars. The difference that they would have made from however much they put into it. Let's say they put a million dollars into it. The rest of that will be capital gains. Okay. Number eight. Oh, we're to eight already. The last um, final income stream is royalties. Okay. So it's incomes from income from your ideas. So this is why intellectual property is so important. I'm an idea person. I can come up with ideas like that. And when you're like that, you really have to protect your ideas because people will take your ideas and steal them and make money. Okay. So stop giving your ideas away. That's my soapbox. Royalties are um, anything from your ideas. So think about music, music artists. A lot of times when you hear artists say, you know, I haven't gotten any royalties. They had a terrible deal. This is what they're referencing. They're rep rep referencing the money that they did not make from their idea. Photographers, when they take pictures and they have those stamps on it. That's why um, Getty Images can sue uh, celebrities for pictures that they took of them because they own them, right? Photographers photographers can say, no, you can't use my picture. Even though it's a picture of yourself, you can't use it unless you pay me for it. That's a royalty. Any invention, any book sales, if you wrote a book and it's published or a published author, those are considered royalties. Think about J.K. Rowling. That's how she made her millions of dollars through royalties and any patents. And so those are the eight different income streams. Now, what you'll see is a lot of times with these income streams, they can overlap. So you'll have an example, for example, a rental income. You can have a house that's considered rental income. You can have a house that's considered profit income where you bought it for low and you sold it. Um, you can have a house that's considered um, interest income where maybe, you know, you, maybe that's not a good idea, not interest income, but definitely uh, residual income where you're renting it out or um, capital gains once you sell it. Now, the goal of knowing these different income streams is to not trade your time for money, okay? So like I said earlier, anytime, hey, boss brand, welcome, welcome. Anytime you can make money and you don't have to give people your time, that's what you want, right? Because you can't get more time back. So what you really want to focus on when you're thinking about these income streams is finding ideas, finding solutions, finding things that are going to allow you to make money without physically being there, to make money without spending a whole lot of time or any time on it to make money, okay? The second thing is you want to think big. So although there are eight different income streams, you can have multiple um, streams under one income block, okay? So if you are talking about rental income, you can have multiple properties, right? Maybe you have an event space, maybe you have an apartment complex, maybe you have a commercial building. Those are all considered different streams, even though it's rental income, under rental income, okay? Now, I want to give you an example of why I said that you have to think big. Let's say you're a hairdresser, okay? You've been doing hair for 20 years, you're the best in your city, um, and you're, re you're really ready to kind of step from behind a chair. So, doing heads, you're earning income, right? 
let's say you say, okay, I want to open a salon or I want to open salon suites. Now you have rental income. So you don't have to physically be, be there. There are minimal things that you have to do, but you're collecting money from your tenants. Then let's say you invent a new amazing technique and everybody wants to know how to do it. Everybody wants to know your secret. Now you have royalty income, right? Because I'm going to charge you to figure out how to do my technique and make money. Then you buy stocks. So now, you know, you're sitting on a couple hundred thousand, a couple million. You say, I want to buy some stocks. You buy some stocks that have dividend yields. Now you have dividend income. So now you are getting money off your money. Let's say, okay, you have so much money now that you want to start loaning income, so loaning money. So now you have interest income where you're loaning the money out to house flippers. Maybe your brother flips houses or whatever. He says, give me a hundred thousand. It's not a scam. You say, okay, I want 10% back. And he gives that to you. So you make 10K on your hundred thousand. So now you have interest income. And then let's say you tire, right? And you say, oh, I'm done. I want to be done with this. Um, I'm going to open a school and I'm going to teach people how to do hair. So now you have residual income because you can hire managers, you can hire instructors, you can hire operation uh, managers to be there and you don't have to be there to run the school. It's just going to make you money. So that's a good example of residual money. So when you're thinking about how to really grow your income, when you're thinking about things that you can do, don't be afraid to recycle ideas that, you, that, that you're already doing. Don't be afraid to use ideas that are close to what you're already doing because you can expand on those and still make more money, right? You don't have to do something completely different. It can be something related to what you already do, okay? So those are the eight. I hope you enjoyed this Money Mondays. It was a little longer than usual, but that's okay. Hopefully you got a better understanding of what the different streams of income are. And I got your mind kind of working a little bit on some things that you can do to start diversifying your income, to start really focusing on growing your income, focusing on your portfolio and all of that good stuff. Okay. Candy said, move in silence. I know that's right, Candy, because I'd be trying to be quiet, but I talk too much. Thank you, Tash, um, Tashina. I appreciate it. Thank you, Carla. I will see you all next week. Um, I'll have to think about what we're going to do for Money Mondays next week. I'll think of something, but stay tuned. I will see you all throughout the week, and I hope you have an amazing week. Take it easy. Bye-bye. <laughs>